Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today I want to show you guys how to run Atari 5200 games on your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie 3.7. Before we go to the Raspberry Pi, there are a few things that you are going to need. First, most important thing you're going to need is the Atari BIOSes. Now, you need all of these BIOSes, and if you legally own an Atari, you can legally obtain these easily. We have the 5200.ROM, the ATARIBAS, the SA, the SB, and the XL ROM. Now, we need all of these BIOSes in order for this to work correctly. Next thing you're going to need are some games. So when you rip your Atari games, um, they will come zipped. So you can extract them using WinRAR or 7-Zip. I'm going to extract this and just show you. When you extract the game, there will be several files inside of here. Now you do not need all of these files for the game to work, but you need to know which file does work correctly. And this can kind of be a crapshoot sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I have not tested Pitfall. But I'm going to take Pitfall 01.bin. And it's the bigger file inside of here. And I'm going to just test this one out. So I'm going to throw it in my Atari games folder. Now these are the games I'm going to be transferring to my uh, RetroPie. So I'll have Asteroids, Dig Dug, Mrs. Pac-Man, and Pitfall. Hopefully we will get Pitfall to work. Like I said, I have not tried this, so we're kind of shooting in the dark here. After you have obtained your Atari BIOS and your games, it is time to go to the Retro Pi, or to your Raspberry Pi. Now I transfer everything over network, and it's super simple. I will show you how to do that right now. So we're going to transfer our BIOS and our Atari games to our Raspberry Pi over network. You need to make sure your Raspberry Pi is booted up, running Retro Pi, and connected to the same network as the PC you are transferring your BIOS and ROMs from. This, there are two different ways to do this. You can use the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, and to find the IP address, you can Go to your Raspberry Pi, go to the Retro Pi menu, scroll down until you see Show IP, grab your IP address, and you can connect like that. But mine usually works um, pretty good by just going to my File Explorer. Up at the top of the Quick Access search bar, I just type in backslash backslash Retro Pi, all capital. And I am inside of my Retro Pi. If the backslash backslash retro pie does not work, you can always type in your IP address. It will be backslash backslash whatever your IP address, 192-168-10-115. Your IP address will be different from that. It could be the same, but it's probably going to be different. So find your IP address if the backslash backslash retro pie does not work. I'm going to snap this to the side. I'm going to open up my Atari BIOSes. Now inside of my RetroPie folder here, BIOS. And we just want to copy all of the BIOSes. You need all of these. 5200, AS, SA, SB, and XL. And just copy them right to the BIOS folder on your RetroPie. I'm going to back up. I'm going to close out my BIOS folder. I'm going to open up my ROMs folder for my Atari 5200 games. We'll go to ROMs, scroll down until we see Atari 5200, open the folder, copy your ROMs, and just drag them over. Like I said, if you cannot access your RetroPie over network, you may need to turn network sharing on in Windows or use the IP address that is provided to you on your Raspberry Pi under, re under the Retro Pi menu and just scroll down to see Show IP. So now that we have all of the BIOSes in our games on the Raspberry Pi, we're going to move to the Raspberry Pi now and we're going to set up Atari 5200. 
You should be playing those games in no time. Okay, I'm back at the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie 3.7. After you've loaded your ROMs and your BIOSes, you need to reboot one time in order for the emulator to show up on the front end. So go to Quit, Restart Emulation Station. can scroll over and we see our Atari 5200. Real quick, if you weren't able to load your ROMs over the network using the backslash backslash RetroPie, go to RetroPie menu, scroll down until you see Show IP, click on Show IP, and your IP address will be shown. That's what you type in, backslash backslash, whatever your IP address is. So we're going to get into loading our BIOSes for the Atari 5200. So start your Atari 5200 emulator. You can click on any one of your games that you'd like to start with because it won't start right now. We have to load our BIOSes. So we're, this will bring us into the Atari emulator front end. Now from here, I have a keyboard and I have my USB SNES controller connected. You have to have a keyboard to start your games. F4 will start your games when you're on the main menu of the game. So you need a keyboard. There's no way around it right now. We cannot map the F4 key to our controller as of yet. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to, but right now we cannot. So most of these games work great on a standard 5200 cartridge. Now it could say standard 8 kilobyte, standard 16 kilobyte, or standard 32 kilobyte, depending on the game you are launching. So I'm going to start with a standard 8 kilobyte 5200 cartridge. You will be prompted with this menu. Now a lot of you may be stuck here. So it's asking us to load, it's not seeing our BIOS for Atari. You need to press F1. We are now in the Atari 800 emulator front end. Scroll down to emulator configuration. Press enter. Scroll down to system ROM settings. Now, Atari thinks of it of its BIOSes as ROMs. So it is, this is not the game ROM setting. This is the BIOS ROM setting. Enter. Now from here, there's a few things we need to do. We need to load up all the BIOSes that we put onto our Raspberry Pi over network. So we're going to start with the 400 slash 800 OS BIOS ROM location. Press enter. Now from here, we have a few choices. First one we're going to choose is custom. Now we need to locate our BIOS folder. So click on the two dots. The two dots again, the two dots again, and one more time. This will bring us into the main menu of our file system. We need to go to Home, Pi, Retro Pi. Press Enter, BIOS. Now from here, we're loading the custom 400-800 ROM and that BIOS ROM is the SB ROM. So it's A T A R I O S B. You need to do this correctly. This is the A T A R I O S B dot ROM for the custom ROM location. Now we have the custom ROM loaded. Next, we need to go to revision A PAL. Press enter. You should still be in your BIOS folder from here. We need to load the SA ROM. So the A-T-A-R-I-O-S-A -A -A ROM. Now I will have all of this in the description for you. Press escape. We now need to load our XL slash XE BIOS OS ROM location. Press enter. Here we want to go to BB01 revision 2. Press enter, and we want to load the XL BIOS that we loaded. A-T-A-R-I-X-L dot ROM. Press enter. 
we can escape from here by pressing escape. We want to load our 5200 BIOS ROM location now. Press enter on the 5200 BIOS. And here we want to choose original and load your 5200.rom BIOS. We're going to back out of this one. Now we need to load our basic ROM location. Press enter. Now this will be revision C. Press enter. And we need to load up our AS. So the A-T-A-R-I-B-A-S dot ROM. Press escape. Now all of that will be listed in the description. I will also have a link to the RetroPie GitHub, which will explain this to you. But those BIOSes need to be loaded on those exact lines with the exact BIOS loaded, or it will not work. Press Escape. Scroll down to Save, con save Configuration File. Scroll down to Save Configuration on Exit. Press Enter. Now what that does is after we exit, it will save automatically for us. Now you only need to load those BIOSes one time in order for this to work. Press escape. We need to exit the emulator. Now from here, I'm going to choose Asteroids again. And through this menu, I cannot scroll down anymore. So this is... Um, I believe this is a bug with the emulator, but don't panic. Just press F5 on the keyboard. This will bring us to the self-test. From here, press F1. Now, this is where we're going to launch our Atari games from, the Run Atari program. We cannot launch our ROMs from the front end of RetroPie, or emulation station. Something is not correct with the emulator right now, but we can run them from the Atari 800 emulator front end, which is totally fine by me. If I'm playing Atari games, I don't mind being in this menu at all. Run Atari program. Click on the two dots. We need to navigate to our home folder again. Two dots. Two dots. Two dots. Home, Pi, Retro Pi, ROMs, Atari 5200. Now from here, these are our ROMs that we have to play. I have Asteroids, Dig Dug, Mrs. Pac-Man, and Pitfall. I have not tried Pitfall, so I'm going to scroll to Pitfall using my keyboard. Press Enter. And I'm going to load a one chip 16 kilobyte 5200 cartridge. Press enter. From here, you need to press F4 to start your game. When you start any of these games, it has to be done by the keyboard by pressing F4. You can use your controller now to play the game. So the pitfall did work. And they run really, really well. Got hit in the knee. Oh no. Okay. Oh. That just killed me. In order to exit, F1. We can run another game by running Atari program. Let's try Mrs. Pac Man. Enter on the keyboard. And. Standard 32 kilobyte 5200 cartridge. Like I said, the standard cartridge is what most of these games will run on. So it could say standard 8 kilobyte, standard 16 kilobyte, standard 32 kilobyte. You may have to scroll to find it, but the standard whatever kilobyte 
5200 cartridge runs most of these games. Press enter and you have to press F4 to start the game. No other buttons will work. F4. I am now using my wired USB SNES controller to control Miss Pac-Man. I'm gonna try to go get these dudes. Oh no. Oh yeah, it's over guys. Done. And all of these games that I've played have run amazingly. If you'd like to exit your game, press F1 on your keyboard. We can run another Atari program by pressing Enter. We'll try Dig Dug. And remember the standard cartridge. F4. So it's pretty awesome to be able to play these old Atari games on your Raspberry Pi on the big screen. Um, a lot of these games are really hard to find in real form. So if you do own the Atari and the ROMs, you can legally have the BIOS and the ROMs. And it works very, very well. On to stage two. That's it guys, that's how you run the Atari 5200 emulator on the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie 3.7. Now I have tried all kinds of different ways, this is the only way I have found that it works. To exit F1, we're back in the Atari emulator, front end, and exit emulator. So I'll demonstrate here that if I want to load Miss Pac-Man from the retro pie or the emulation station front end press a and I am always frozen here so what you need to do is press F5 that will bring you into the self test menu F1 run Atari program navigate to your home folder ROMs, standard 32 kilobyte cartridge. So this is the only way that I found that we can make this work. If you know another way, please let me know in the comments below. I would like to launch them from the emulation station front end, but I'm afraid it's not possible at the moment for some unknown reason to me. F4 will start your game. This should work with any controller. The controls are not configurable right now. Um, it is just, they're hard coded. So whatever you set up your controller with is what, how it's gonna work here. You can also use your keyboard by using your number pad to navigate or to move your character. So eight is up, two, Eight is up, five is down, four is left, six is right. F1, and you can play as many Atari games as you'd like. That's it guys. That's the only way I've found that this works, and it works really well. It's just too bad we cannot launch them from the emulation station front end, but it doesn't take much more time to get into the settings and get your game launched. If you're ready to play some Atari games, go ahead and try this out. There's a link in the description to the RetroPie GitHub page, which explains more. It also has key configurations, so you can look back at that to know exactly what key does what inside of the Atari 5200 emulator. 
I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And if you could, hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps me out. Like always, thanks for watching.